She is uh, an Indian girl of, of, of 16, of 14, or 12. 13, actually. Now it is time for Edith to run, run between the old Canadian trees. But where are the doves today? Where is the smiling, luminous fish? Where are the hiding places hiding? Where is grace today? Why isn't candy being fed to history? Where is the Latin music? Hell! Edith ran through the woods. Thirteen years old, the men after her. She was wearing a dress made from flower sacks. A certain flower company packed their products in sacks printed with flowers. There is a 13-year-old girl running through needle pine. Have you ever seen such a thing? Follow her eternal cock of the brain. Edith told me this story, or part of it, years later. And I've been pursuing her little body through the forest ever since, I confess. Here I am, an old scholar, wild with unspecific grief, compulsive detective of gonad shadows. Edith, forgive me. It was always the 13-year-old victim I always took. Forgive yourself, F said. 13-year-old skin is very beautiful. What other food besides brandy is good after 13 years in the world? The Chinese eat old eggs, but that is no comfort. Oh, Catherine Ticaguita, send me 13-year-olds today. I am not cured. I will never be cured. I do not want to write this history. I do not want to mate with thee. I do not want to be as facile as F. I do not want to be the leading Canadian authority. I do not want a new yellow table. I do not want astral knowledge. I do not want to do the telephone dance. I do not want to conquer the plague. I want 13-year-olds in my life. Bible King David had one to warm his dying bed. Why shouldn't we associate with beautiful people? Tight, tight, tight. Oh, I want to be trapped in a 13-year-old life. I know all about war and business. I am aware of shit. 13-year-old electricity is very sweet to suck. And I am, or let me be, tender as a hummingbird. Don't I have some hummingbird in my soul? Isn't there something timeless and unutterably light in my lust? Hovering over a young wet crack in a blur of blonde hair. Oh, come, hardy darlings. There is nothing of King Midas in my touch. I freeze nothing into money. I merely graze your hopeless nipples as they grow from me into architectural problems. I change nothing as I float and sip under the first bra. Help! Four men followed Edith. Damn every one of them. I can't blame them. The village was behind them, filled with families and business. These men had watched her for years. French Canadian school books do not encourage respect for the Indians. Some part of the Canadian Catholic mind is not certain of the church's victory over the medicine man. No wonder the forests of Quebec are mutilated and sold to America. Magic trees sawed with a crucifix. Murder the saplings. Bittersweet is the sap of a 13-year-old. Oh, tongue of the nation, why don't you speak for yourself? Can't you see what is behind all this teenage advertising? Is it only money? What does wooing the teenage market really mean? Look at all the 13-year-old legs on the floor spread in front of the TV screen. Is it only to sell them cereals and cosmetics? Madison Avenue is thronged with hummingbirds who want to drink from those little fairly-haired crevices. Woo them. Woo them suited writers of commercial poems. Dying America wants a 13-year-old Abishag to warm its bed. Men who shave want little girls to ravish, but sell them high heels instead. The sexual hip parade is written by fathers who shave. Oh, suffering child lust offices of the business world. And there is a 13-year-old blonde lying on the back seat of a parked car, one nylon toe playing with the armrest ashtray. 
The other foot on the rich interior carpet, dimples on her cheeks, and only a hint of innocent acne, and her garter belt is correctly uncomfortable. Far away roam the moon and a few police flashlights. Her Beethoven panties are damp from the prom. She alone of all the world believes that fucking is holy, dirty, and beautiful. And who is this making his way through the bushes? It is her chemistry teacher. Who smiled all night while she danced with the football star because it is the foam rubber of his car she lies dreaming on. Charity begins alone, Beth used to say. Many long nights have taught me that the chemistry teacher is not merely a sneak. He loves youth truly. Advertising courts lovely things. Nobody wants to make life hell. In the hardest cell exists a thirsty, love-torn hummingbird. Beth wouldn't want me to hate forever the men who pursued Edith. Sob, sob, whimper, oh, oh. They caught up with her in a stone quarry of an abandoned mine, some place very mineral and hard, owned indirectly by U.S. interests.